In step with Robert Fastoria. Now in cool jazzy color. Mom, how many times can I tell you that I'm sorry? Robert asked as he picked up a pancake off of a plate. Try four hundred times, because that's how much that vase cost me, his mom answered. I think it would be safe to assume that you would want me to pay for it, Robert asked. Yes, you are safe to assume that, his mom said, dumping some leftover coffee into a different pot. But where am I going to get... Four hundred dollars. I just spent one fifty on that collector's edition of... Well... His mom said, cutting him off. I think it's time you got a job! That afternoon, Robert met up with Chicago and Jeremy at Chicago's house. Your mom wants you to get a job? Chicago asked. Hey, don't worry. My dad has an opening at his store, Jeremy said. What does it do? Robert asked. He owns a juice factory, Jeremy said. What? Chicago said. He owns his own juice factory and company. Haven't you heard of Simply Dishler? Jeremy asked. Actually, I have, Chicago said. I have too, Robert answered. What do I have to do? You could put expiration dates on bottles, put caps on the bottles, and put labels on all the bottles, Jeremy said. Well, that sounds like an adventure. Not, Robert said. Well, where else is there? There aren't many places hiring now, Chicago said. Robert then snapped his fingers. I've got it. Where? Jeremy asked. Raven Lanes, Robert said. You want to work at the bowling alley? Chicago asked. Yeah, why not? You bowl league. Jeremy and I bowl league. So I think that would be the best place for me to start, Robert explained. You can't be serious? Chicago asked. Yes, I am. On Saturday, I'm gonna ask Daryl for a job there, Robert said. Good luck with that, Chicago said. Later in the week, Robert explains to Derek and Rochelle about his soon-to-be new job. You ball league? Derek asked. Yeah, for about six years, Robert answered. So do I, Rochelle remarked. Really? When? Robert asked. Wednesday evenings, she answered. Our group isn't very large. Well, then maybe I'll see you there sometime, Robert said. You bowl Derek? Not since fourth grade, he answered. You should go sometime, Robert said. Where? he asked. Raven Lane's on 31st downtown, Robert said. It's not that far from here, Rochelle answered. Well, maybe I will then, Derek said as Mrs. Pond walked into the room. Okay, class, get out your notebooks. We're going to learn about the wonders of rain, she said. That Saturday morning, Robert waltzed into the bowling alley very early. His league didn't start till 9 o'clock, and he wanted to talk to Daryl. Hey, Daryl, you hiring these days? Robert asked. Maybe. What, you want a job here? He asked, walking to the front counter and turning on the lanes for the kids who were there to practice. Yes, Robert answered. Okay, then. Daryl walked to a closet behind the cash register and pulled out a piece of paper. Fill this out and return it to me by next week, and you'll have a job here. Thank you, Robert said and walked over to his team. What was that about? One of Robert's teammates asked. Nothing. Robert answered. That day, Robert rolled a 501 in three games. He came home to find a message on the answering machine. It was Daryl. Hey, Rob, it's Daryl. I'm calling in regards to your, um, applying for a job here. If you could have the application filled out by Wednesday and drop it off on Wednesday. You can start after your league is done next Saturday. Um, thanks again, goodbye. The line then went dead. All right then, Robert said and ran up to his room to begin filling out the application. When his mom got home, he explained to her what was going to happen. That's wonderful, Robert. I'm very proud of you, she answered, setting down the bags she was carrying and putting her purse on a chair. So, I start Saturday, Robert said. 
Daryl said to drop the application off on Wednesday. Okay then, I can drive you there, his mom said. I was just gonna walk, like I do every Saturday to the league, Robert said. Okay then, his mom said and began to empty the bags she was carrying. Later on in the day, Chicago and Jeremy stopped by. They were interested in Robert's explanation of his new job. So you got accepted, Chicago said, sitting down on the sofa. Good for you, Jeremy said. Thanks, Jeremy. At least someone is supportive, Robert said, glaring at Chicago. What? I try to be supportive, yet you don't appreciate anything I say, Chicago said. I respect you well enough to tell you everything I need to. You remind me so much of... Uh, Robert then sat down. Who, Robert? Chicago asked. My dad, Robert said, hiding his face. What? If I remind you of your dad, you should be happy, Chicago said. No, you remind me of the bad side my dad had, Robert said. He was always so stubborn and wouldn't appreciate half the stuff I tried to do. Well, I'm sorry, Rob, Chicago said. I mean, your dad was one cool guy. Remember how he used to play a penny whistle with his nose? Chicago asked. And when he got angry at you that one time and hit you in the head with a 2 by 4 Jeremy asked. Robert started laughing. <laughs> See, your dad was not all that bad. Even though having that angry diss all the time somewhat contributed to his... Well... That's it. Chicago said softly as Robert stopped laughing. Please, don't talk about it now, Robert said. Especially since the anniversary is almost here. Sorry, Chicago said. Come on, Rob, Jeremy said. Your dad lived a great life and had some good times while he was here. Yeah, Robert said. If only he didn't get angry at that clerk, even though it was her fault. Let's not think about it now. What matters is that you now have an awesome job at Raven Nains, Chicago said. Yeah, and I get to see you in Rochelle when I'm there, Robert said to Jeremy. Yeah, wait, Rochelle's bowls? Jeremy asked. I didn't know that, Chicago said. Yeah, she told Derek and I in biology a few days ago, Robert said. Well then, that works out well with you, Chicago answered. Oh, now what? First I get upset, get better. Now you get upset. What is it? Robert asked. What do you think? Chicago asked. All right, what's her name? Jeremy asked. Katie. Chicago said. Where's this coming from? Robert asked. What? Where did you meet her? Jeremy questioned. She's in my Spanish and English. Ironic, isn't it? Chicago said. Do you know her last name? Jeremy asked. No, but I think it starts with an M. I'm not too sure, Chicago said, scratching the top of his head. Can you describe her? Jeremy asked as the telephone rang. Robert ran into the kitchen to see who it was. Well, she has somewhat descent-length hair. Ugh, black, I think, and bluish-green eyes. She also has, uh those things on your face that you sometimes have a lot of. Chicago asked. Pimples? Jeremy asked. No, you idiot. Um, freckles. Chicago finally got the word. I think I have seen her before. She might be in a lunch of mine, Jeremy said. Dude, I have almost all of your lunches. Which one could she be in? Chicago asked. The one you aren't, Jeremy answered. Oh, yeah, that works. Chicago answered, sitting down just as Craig ran into the room. Where's Robert? He asked. On the phone, Jeremy said. Craig then ran into the kitchen to see if Robert was still on the phone. Jeremy and Chicago sat silently. What time is it? Jeremy asked. Uh, one o'clock, Chicago said, looking at his watch. Thanks, Jeremy answered. You know, I should buy you a watch since you always ask me for the time, Chicago said. Why? That would be stupid, Jeremy said. Plus, why would I want to look at something you give me? Why I ought. Guys, we gotta go! Robert said, running into the living room. Why? Jeremy asked. That was Daryl. He said the he might not need me to work at all. He just got another person today. Robert said. Who? Chicago asked. 
He didn't say, but we still have to move. The three then ran out the front door toward the bowling alley. Hey, what did Craig want? Jeremy asked halfway to the alley. Help with homework. What else? Robert said as they rounded the final corner to the bowling alley. The three burst through the door and ran to the front desk to see Daryl at the back of it. Robert, good. You're here. Listen, I don't think we're gonna be needing you around here right now, Daryl said. Why not? You said that you were hiring, Robert answered back. Yes, but one person just filled out their application and I started him today. Sorry, Robert, Daryl said. Well, who is he? Robert asked. Me, said a voice from a closet behind the counter. Robert, Chicago, and Jeremy looked into the closet and were stunned. I should have known it would be you, Chicago said. The person slowly stepped out of the closet to reveal himself. Tom Bechtel, Jeremy said. So you decided to steal Robert's job, right? Chicago asked. Um, no, I was just in need of work and thought that this would be the best place to start, Tom said. That's right, Tom, Daryl said as he walked him toward the lounge area. Consider this the payback for not letting me have your shoes, Tom whispered to Robert as he and Daryl walked off. I really hate that kid, Chicago said. Now what? We have to get him fired, Robert said. And just how do you suppose we're going to do that? Chicago asked. I have an idea, Jeremy said. Really? Robert asked. Yeah, come down here. We can do it right now. Jeremy said as the three walked over to an empty lane and sat down in the seats. What now? There's no way we can take him on, Chicago said. That's it. We won't take him on. What we do is we mess with his mind, Jeremy said. Huh? Robert asked. We need to do stuff that Tom does every day, but change it for the worse, so that he gets blamed and then fired, Jeremy explained. How do you plan to do that? Chicago questioned. Well, it looks like he's on kitchen duty today, so what we need to do is mess up an order or something like that, Jeremy said. Look here! Jeremy showed the two how Tom would take and order and then go and make it. That doesn't seem too hard, Robert said. Let's do it! The three then quietly sneaked into the kitchen and hid bend a pile of boxes. Tom was talking to himself. Okay, a hamburger with no cheese. She said she was lactose intolerant. Um, an order of fries and a medium diet cola. Tom started grilling the burger and frying the fries. Just as he finished the burger, Daryl called him into the hallway. Tom, Tom walked out fast. That's our cue. Robert! Go and put cheese on that burger, Jeremy said. Okay, Robert said and found a piece of cheese on the counter, opened the burger, and put it on. He hightailed it back to his hiding spot, just as Tom walked in and took the order to the customer. That's strike one, Jeremy said. Now for strike two. Tom walked back in just as he heard someone yelling. He ran out to find the woman whom he had taken the order from, clutching her chest. Tom, what did you do? Daryl yelled. Nothing, Tom said. I asked for no cheese on my burger because I'm lactose intolerant, and this young man put it on, the lady yelled. Tom, is this true? Daryl asked. No, sir. I made sure it didn't put cheese on, but somehow I got on there, Tom explained. I'm watching you, Tom Bechtel. Don't do it again, Daryl said and walked away. Tom disappeared back into the kitchen, Robert, Chicago, and Jeremy still in their hiding spots, waiting to attack again. Tom left the kitchen about ten minutes later to take another order, and the three came together again. That first on worked. Now let's try something else, Chicago said. Such as? Robert asked. Oh, here he comes. Chicago pointed, and the three went into hiding again. Tom walked in, set the order down on the table, and started preparing the food. Order of... Chicken fingers and fries and a ginger ale, Tom said. Crap! No fries. He looked in the fryer and saw no fries were in there. He prepared the chicken fingers and got the sauce the customer wanted, and then walked into the back of the kitchen to the walk-in freezer to get fries. That's our cue. See that Tabasco sauce? Put that in the honey mustard, Chicago said to Robert, who shook about five shacks of Tabasco sauce into the small container of honey mustard and stirred it with his finger. When he heard a creaking noise, he ran back to his hiding spot. Seconds later, Tom appeared with the fries. 
dumped them into the fryer, and they were done in ten minutes. Robert wiped his finger on the table leg when Tom walked out of the kitchen to deliver the order. He came back in fifteen seconds later. Three. Two. One. Chicago said just as someone yelled. Tom fled from the kitchen. Are you okay? He asked. You. You. Oh. The man said and left the bar. What? Tom asked. Tom. What does he do now? Daryl asked. I don't know. I delivered the food to him, and he then just started screaming, Tom said. Daryl started tasting and smelling the food. When he smelled the sauce, he had to push it away from his nose. You put Tabasco sauce in this man's honey mustard? Daryl asked. No, I never did that, Tom said. Tom, you are the only one in the kitchen. How could it not have been you? Daryl asked. Tom said nothing. One more time, Tom, and your employeeship here is terminated. Daryl said and stormed out of the room. Tom walked back into the kitchen. Robert, Chicago, and Jeremy had snuck out as Daryl was talking to Tom. They were in a party room, halfway down to the hall from the kitchen. This is going well. What now? Robert asked. We give the final run, Chicago said. What's that? Robert asked. We screw up the order, Chicago said. How? Robert asked. I had to ask, Robert said, standing in a men's room stall. Come on, Bob. Jeremy and I look just the same, Chicago said. Okay, Robert said and stepped out of the stall. Simultaneously, Jeremy and Chicago did too. Each of them were dressed as young college girls. Each had black shoes with black knee-high socks. Jeremy had a red skirt, while Robert and Chicago had black ones. Each had on a white blouse, and Chicago had a gray sweater. Lipstick and eyeliner adorner their faces. Robert, how did you make- Bones! Robert said before Chicago could finish. Ready? Jeremy asked in his girl voice. Yes, dear, I am! Robert said in his voice. The three slowly exited the men's room and walked to the bar and sat down in a seat. Tom was soon up next to them. Good afternoon, ladies. May I help you? He asked. Oh, yes. I'll have some water, please. Jeremy said. We'll have root beer, Chicago and Robert said. Okay, I'll have those out in a second, Tom said and walked away. Okay, now we need to have two meals, one we order and one we make up, Chicago said. Quickly, the three thought of two separate meals, one they would order, and the other to contradict what they ordered. Tom soon arrived and took their orders. Half an hour later, he was out with the wrong order. Excuse me, dear boy! Robert said as Daryl walked in. Yes? Tom asked. I ordered the chicken sandwich, not chicken fingers. Yes, and I had a cheeseburger, not a hot dog and fries, Chicago said. I ordered the Raven specialty sandwich, not the sandwich of the day, Jeremy said. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the other things. I could always make you some more, Tom said. No, we have to be somewhere else now, Robert said and stood up. Come on, girls! The three then left the building. Daryl wasn't pleased. Tom, you are fired, he said and walked away. A week later, Robert's home phone rang. It was Daryl. Hey, Robert, good news. I have and opening for work if you want to come down, Daryl said. Oh, really? Robert asked, looking surprised. I would love to. On Wednesday, Robert started his first shift from 4.30 to 7. He was able to see Rochelle in her league that night. Just as her league wrapped up at 5.15, Tom stormed into the building. Daryl wasn't there that night, so Tom yelled at Robert. Luck, Fastoria. I know you and your buddy somehow worked you way into getting me fired, but I don't know how, Tom said, interrupting his talking to Rochelle. You got fired? Robert asked, surprisingly. Don't give me that crap. I know you somehow got me fired, and trust me, I'll find out, Tom said. Get out of here, you tall freak, Rochelle said. Oh, got your little girlfriend standing up for you, Tom asked. That's pathetic, saying that the highest she can stand is four foot ten, Tom said. Yeah, well... That means that I can do uh, this, Rochelle said and punched Tom in the stomach. Yeah, that's how I 
Bring it. Ow. Tom said and walked out of the building. That was hot, Robert said, wiping the sweat from his brown hair and flattening the blonde spot on the right side of his head. What? Rochelle asked as they watched Tom pull out of the parking lot. That! What you just did, Robert said. Oh, thanks. I'll see you tomorrow, she said and walked out into the parking lot while Robert disappeared behind the counter. Hey, Derek! Rochelle! Robert said, walking into biology then next day. What's up, Robert? Derek asked. So, I hear you got the job. Yep. Just had to make some changes to the staffing situation, Robert said. How? Derek asked. Well, Robert looked around to see if Tom was anywhere. Chicago, Jeremy and I messed up orders that Tom was making for customers, Robert said. Wait, you go, Tom Bechtel, fired from the bowling alley? Derek asked. <laughs> Not so loud, Robert said. Keep in on the DL, Rochelle said. Okay, Derek answered. So, how do you do it? He asked. Chicago and I messed up two orders, and then the three of us both dressed as ladies and confused Tom about our order. It was so funny, Robert said. Must have been seeing you in a skirt, Rochelle said. Oh, yeah. Have you ever worn a skirt? Robert asked. Every time my chair, uh, Rochelle answered. Yeah, well, I can wear a skirt anytime I want to, Robert said. Would you wear one to school tomorrow for $200? Derek asked. No, no amount of money will make me do anything, Robert said. How about a date with me, uh, Rochelle asked. Dude, why are you wearing a skirt? Chicago asked Robert in homeroom on Friday. Rochelle said she would on a date with me if I did, Robert said. Well, you must be desperate, Chicago said, and started to break down laughing. The rest of the class did, too. Bum freshman, Mrs. Blazer said, and started laughing as loud as the entire class was as Robert said there, with a skirt on that came a quarter of the way done his legs, staring at the wall, hopping that a date with Rochelle would not be as painful as this. in my Spanish and English. Ironic, isn't it? Uh, no. Uh, no.